in a world where one man had nothing better to do than call in care packages for 15 hours. <sighs> I'm gonna have to come back tomorrow. This summer, prepare for boredom like you've never felt before. <sighs> yeah, this fucking sucks. I didn't think it would take this long. In 1000, not in theaters ever. Care package odds, that's what this is all about. Are they worth using? From a thousand private match crates, I ended up with this. There were some interesting discoveries. You can see the rarity didn't completely match up with the value of the streak, like you might expect. Maybe you're tired of getting shield turrets, but actually the five kill streaks were the most common thing. When you combine the three of them, they make up almost half of everything. You're pretty darn likely to get one of those from your care package. After that, oddly, the personal radar and CUAV were next, even though they're not worth the same kills at three and four. And same for the shield turret and UAV being even less likely than those apparently. Do they think the shield turret is good? Or is that an act of kindness to have it be less common? Then a big drop down to the sentry gun, then the Wheelson, then VTOL, Phosphorus, and Advanced UAV were pretty similar, then the big boy lethal streaks around 1% each, and ending with the Juggernaut being a depressing roughly 1 in 300. I have to mention that the sample size is a factor here, as much as I'd hate to talk down my big 1000 I'm so proud of, well, yeah, bigger would be better, but this is pretty darn good for our purposes. A couple hundred crates would not have been enough to get a clear picture, but with a thousand, we even saw the rarest things show up a few times and got a very clear trend. Just don't treat these like exact percentages. So, are care packages any good? Well, using those results, the average value of the streak you get out of a care package is 4.88, and the care package is a 4 kill streak. Well, sounds like a great value, but not really. If you want my opinion, assuming you're using it as something you call in safe in the back of the map and wait for it to come and pick it up, you just wasted a minimum of 15 seconds not being in the game. Plus, there's the chance you die and lose the crate entirely. Plus, there are some streaks I don't want at all. I should redo the weighted average to make shield turrets worth literally nothing, maybe tune some of the other ones based on what their value is to me, like sentry guns fall over at the slightest gust of wind. That thing isn't worth seven kills. With all that, it doesn't seem like such a great deal anymore. For a lot of players, I think the waiting around for it is already reason enough to not run it. But totally up to you. Maybe you want to use it as a trap or a distraction, just throw them around and not care who takes it. Sure, I suppose, but the big downside to the care package this year is that you don't know what you're getting until you take it. There's no icon hovering above it telling you what it is, and even when you're next to it, it only says, take killstreak. Certainly made the testing more annoying, because I couldn't just look at them from afar. I had to pick them all up and then use them all, because I found that if I didn't use them, I'd hit a cap of how many I could hold at a time. Anyway, so that change means you can't see a crappy streak in there and decide, oh, I don't even want to pick that up. I'll let a teammate who wants it take it, or I'll use it as bait for enemies. It's been that way forever. I don't know why they made that change. Gotta say, I'm not a fan. Maybe they wanted to protect your feelings when you get killed next to your marker and re spawn across the map and see that gunship icon pop up. I mean, you'll probably figure it out pretty quick when it gets called in though. And that change also means there can't be any perk for re-rolling the care package, and that's what often made them worth using in the past. Well, ultimately, only you can decide what is worthwhile to you. I know traditionally the care package has always been the way for lower skill players to try out the higher tier streaks that they might not be able to outright earn in a much less invasive way than the devil incarnate requisitions. Or it's for people who don't want to try to go on a big streak, but still sometimes want to get something fun now and then. But with how low the odds are for higher tier streaks and the style of matchmaking this year, I think just about everybody would have an easier time simply earning a streak directly. Like what sounds easier to you, going on one eight kill streak or going on about 75 four kill streaks, assuming you pick up every package. And you could use hardline to make them three kill streaks, but then you could also use kill chain to help you get to the eight streak, meaning you might only have to get to five. Yeah, I think you'll get a lot more Wilsons and VTOLs by earning them directly. 
Well, those are all the reasons why you may or may not want to run the care package. I would say not worth it, but maybe you like them. And that's fine. They don't have to be the most powerful option for you to have fun using it. But wait, there's more. Time to break down the chart I've been showing a bit further, because I've been lying to you this whole time. Not really, but when I say care package, I'm usually referring to the name of the crate, because I was obviously not only calling in the 4 killstreak version, that would have taken well over 50 hours of private match grinding. No thanks, I could already feel my joints after doing this much. So I was also testing emergency airdrops to speed it up, which the game describes as simply three care packages. Or is it? I did track them separately in case it maybe had a different rarity pool. Who knows, could be better, could be worse. Well, it turned out to be pretty much the same, except for one very strange anomaly. The sentry gun and Wilson completely swapped places. The obvious thought was maybe just blame the sample size, but looking at the numbers instead of the percentages, in emergency airdrops, I got 40 sentry guns and only 19 Wilsons. From care packages, I got five sentry guns to 11 Wilsons. Certainly could be sample size related on the care package side of things, but there could have been something going on there. Really weird to get twice as many Wilsons like that. I also got really unlucky with VTOLs on the care package side. It actually took until the 217th care package, which was the 813th crate overall out of a thousand, until I got my first VTOL out of a care package. I had already gotten at least one of everything else, plenty of VTOLs and emergency airdrop crates. I was so relieved when I finally got one, and then another a little bit later. But that goes to show how even this sample size is not perfect, and anything smaller would have been pretty bad if I had cut the testing at around 300 crates, which was the first game of testing I played. It would have looked like the precision airstrike was super common compared to the other five kill streaks and a bunch of other inconsistencies. I mean, if you've played any game with rare drops in it, you know how the RNG be. Anyway, the emergency airdrop had what felt like more normal V toll luck with the better sample size, and I think it made sense to combine them both when talking about overall care package odds. However, there was one way in which emergency airdrops were clearly working differently. They were not just three random care packages, because I never got a duplicate within each set of three. It was always three different things. Like, I never got two cruise missiles and an airstrike. It would always be one of each thing. It seemed to roll without replacement. There's no way I just happened to never get a duplicate after 245 airdrops. Aside from that, it's hard to say much of anything about emergency airdrops being different from care packages. So, would I recommend the airdrop? Well, it's an 8 kill streak to get 3 things of 4 and a half ish kill value each. If you add them together, you get 14, which, hey, that looks like a good deal again. But I don't think the value of a killstreak is additive like that. I'd rather just have one VTOL than to call in three crates and wait around and end up with a personal radar and a cruise missile. And your odds are lower of actually getting all three packages because of the time it takes to pick them up. A teammate could take one or you might die. Plus the shape of the airdrop I find really annoying. It's a big triangle around where you throw the marker. Modern Warfare 2 is the only game in my memory to have mastered the airdrop to not have random crate placement. In that game, it was a straight line in the direction that you throw the marker, and that made it easy to control where it went, to not have one of them land on the roof. It was also four crates, which was fun. With this, even if you pick a pretty open spot, one of your three crates often finds a way to land out of bounds somewhere. A couple other random things I learned from doing this, apparently shooting a care package can make it impossible to pick up while it's being shot, because it's actually moving the crate. They don't become solid, immovable objects after they land, which could actually be good to know to help prevent care package theft. The funny thing is, with it not telling you what the streak is before you pick it up, for all we know, shooting the crate like this is re-rolling it every time. Maybe it isn't determined when it drops, it's determined when you pick it up. Which means maybe stealing an enemy crate would give you better odds of something good than taking your own. Maybe having a different personal skill level would give you different things from crates. Hmm, get those tinfoil hats on, boys. I'm just asking questions. Are they useful questions? Well, not really. And actually, if we were to think about that, the fact that the emergency airdrop seems to roll without replacement points towards it being determined when they drop. 
on top of that being the simplest way for it to work. Okay, theory debunked. Also, if you're wondering why I didn't have an even 250 care packages to 750 airdrop crates, well, sometimes I only earned a care package and then got killed by a bot. Recruit bots can actually be really goddamn annoying. If they have an LMG, then nothing to worry about. They're gonna stand 20 feet away from you and take half a minute to kill you just by burst hip firing in your general direction in true recruit bot style. But if they have an EBR or a sniper of some kind, Goddamn, they will randomly map you from out of nowhere in one perfectly accurate headshot. I'm out here getting wrecked by recruit bots because they didn't have a harmless AI option. Very frustrating. They love to camp your tack insert too. Finally, it was funny that the score goes off the screen, apparently. I made it 10 points per kill because I was trying to see if I could earn my kill streaks in one kill. I was experimenting with a bunch of settings, but I couldn't find any. Well, that's all. Wasn't this a fun time? I'm so glad I got to cover care package odds instead of supply drop odds this year. And now next season, when they have some killstreak ribbon challenges like the jug, and I want to point out that care package odds are not very good, I'll have some numbers to back up my point. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.